This is a device called Pitch Stepper, and it's kind of like a step sequencer, but it advances uh, its sequence by one step every time it receives an input note, uh, an input MIDI note. But the pitches that it plays are pitches that you've collected ahead of time from a MIDI clip. So this is similar to the kind of behavior that you get with uh, synthesizers like the Roland SH-101, for example, that has trigger inputs or any number of uh, modular synths and sequencers that allow you to advance by step uh, when receiving input, but the actual pitch that you hear is figured out somewhere else. So as an example of, uh, of how this might work, let's actually switch to looking at a modular synthesizer for a moment and examine how this could be interesting. So here we have a simple reactor patch that's basically configured to make a, uh, a very basic monophonic synthesizer. So if I play notes on a MIDI keyboard, what's happening here is that we have a note in device and it sends a gate signal to an envelope, which then triggers a VCA. So we're sort of opening the gate every time we play a note. And at the same time, we send a pitch signal to an oscillator to tune the oscillator. And what's important about this and what's quite different than the way a conventional synthesizer works is that you have two signals that are necessary to produce a note event. One that determines the pitch of an oscillator and another that opens a gate. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. We haven't made anything particularly interesting with that. We've essentially rebuilt a, a standard fixed signal path monophonic synth. But in the modular world where this gets interesting is when you start disconnecting some of these controls. So if I undo the pitch connection here and play notes, what we end up with is a gate that opens but, a pitched, uh, but an oscillator that's sending an extremely low pitch. If I then instead double the gate output and use it to advance a sequencer, what we see now is that something is happening down here. Every time I play a note on the keyboard, again, we're opening the gate, or the opening the VCA because we're sending a gate signal, and we're also advancing the sequencer by one step. If we then use the sequencer to determine the pitch of the oscillator, then something interesting happens. So I'm playing MIDI notes now, and as I play notes on the keyboard, I'm not hearing the notes that I play, I'm hearing the pitches that have been stored in this sequencer. So I'm stepping through a pattern of eight pitches, but I'm only playing one note on my MIDI keyboard. And if I change the step length here, now I'm stepping through only the first five pitches. So this is an interesting kind of byproduct of the way modular synthesizers are kind of designed, which is that really everything is modular. Even a note itself is modular. So to, to actually produce a note in the conventional sense, you have to do two things tune an oscillator, and open a gate. Okay, so let's step back now and take a look at what's interesting about trying to do something like this in live. A clip in live is a container for MIDI notes. And those MIDI notes are generally pretty straightforward, but they put all of that information that you get with that's divided up in a modular synthesizer into one package. So a note in a clip is doing a lot of work. It's telling you an event is happening now and that event is this pitch. So if I play this clip, we get a sequence. It's polyphonic, which is a nice side effect of working with, um, with a more modern synthesizer because I don't have to think about one oscillator per pitch. I can think about driving a synthesizer, a polyphonic synthesizer. In this case, we're playing uh, the Ableton Wavetable synth. Okay, so I have note events here that determine when an event is heard and also what the pitch of that event is. But I want some of this, I want the ability to disconnect these things from each other. So what I'm going to do now is collect the pitches from this clip into this device. Oop, actually I should make sure that I'm selecting the whole clip first. There. So now what has happened is that 15 pitches have been stored into the pitch stepper device. And now if I play the sequence back, it's not gonna sound 
any different than what we heard before. Right, so this is the same pattern we heard before we collected the pitches, but the way the pattern is operating now is quite different than what happened before. Each note event in the clip is marking a piece of time, but the pitches for that note event are determined by the pitches that are stored in the pitch stepper device. They're not coming from the clip anymore. And so right now we don't hear any difference. But there's an interesting thing we can do quickly to sort of test, to, to really see quickly what exactly is different here. If we clear this and play the clip again, it sounds the same. And now if we shrink the clip, if we reduce its length by say a 16th note, it's pretty easy to predict what's going to happen. You're just not going to hear that last note. Let's cut off this whole gesture at the end so it's really easy to hear what's happening. Okay, so this makes sense. We're not hearing these note events. If we do the same thing after collecting the pitches, what we're going to hear is the same rhythm we heard with this reduced length clip, but we'll hear all of the pitches, which means the pitches that occur on these last three note events will wrap around to the front. So let's listen to what that sounds like. So we're still cycling through the same 15 pitches that we were before, but we're um, we're now triggering them with fewer note events. So the pitches and the note events are now unlinked from each other. And you can think of this as being kind of analogous to Live's unlinked uh, automation envelopes. Normally in, in that environment, what you're doing is saying, I'm, I'm operating this automation or modulation envelope at a different length than the length of the notes in the clip. But here we're disconnecting the pitch itself from the length of the notes in the clip. And this can be a really interesting way to use a single clip to explore lots of different uh, patterns and interesting sort of polymetric combinations of uh, disconnected note events and pitch events. So as an example of what, what we might do here, let's play a very different clip now that has a very different set of notes in it. It's shorter than the original clip, it has notes in different places, and those are different notes. But when we play it, what we'll hear is this rhythmic pattern playing the pitches we heard before. And this now sounds pretty different. Um, what we're still doing though is cycling through those pitches from first to last and from lowest to highest. But we can also change the playback direction, so we can say run through that list backwards. or randomize the order once, and then keep that random order every time you play through the list until we select random once again. Or randomize every time we go through the list. Which can make it very difficult to predict actually what's going on. If we want to arbitrarily reset to the very beginning of the list, we can push this button, reset now, and the pitch, pitches will begin cycling from the beginning again immediately. And of course we can clear the stored notes at any moment and then we actually hear the whole clip that we're listening to again. It's note events and also the pitches associated with those note events. So that's what this clip really sounds like. And let's, let's collect the pitches from this clip again and hear the difference. Okay, so a few other interesting things. You may have noticed that there's a chord in this first collection. And we have an option here to choose how chords are, are treated. So by default, each incoming note triggers one pitch from the list. So if we play this with our keyboard, we can see what happens here. Let's make sure that we reset it back to the beginning, and we'll cycle through these pitches starting with this one. And now when we get to the chord, we build it up from the lowest to the highest, and then move to the next set of notes. 
and then back to the beginning. If preserve original chords is on, then one note triggers a particular time slice. And when we get to the chord, one note will trigger the whole chord. So you'll see now that we've switched from 15 notes here to 12 events. So each of these time slices that contains at least one note is now an event. So the sequence is shorter, but it's uh, one note will trigger this whole chord. So if we go back to the beginning again, and now, and now monophonic again. So an important thing to, to remember here is that the input for this device is always polyphonic. So if I turn Preserve Original Chords off and go back to the beginning and play three notes at the same time, we're hearing these three pitches. If I now play three notes, again, we'll hear this pitch, which is standalone, and the first two pitches of the chord. And now we'll play another three note chord and we'll hear the next two pitches of the chord and then the next standalone note, then the next three, and then what would have been a three note chord of a single pitch, which is impossible to play in live, so we'll hear only one pitch triggered by a three note chord. And then we wrap around again to the beginning. So where this can get incredibly confusing is if preserve original chords is on and you play a chord, then you, it becomes very difficult to predict what the outcome of this is going to be. When we played this clip uh, and it was playing without Preserve Original Chords on, we were hearing exactly the pattern. If I turn it on now, something different will happen. Because now, we no longer have this one input note to one pitch relationship. We have one input note per time slice, which might trigger this chord, but this chord is also playing. So at some moment, we're going to hear this chord from the input clip playing some four notes, and some note will play these four pitches. This can be very interesting. It, if you're head is exploding at this point, it might be more interesting to think of this device as a way to get unexpected results instead of trying to predict what it's going to do. Some ways that you can make it a little bit more predictable are by using these various reset options. So by default, reset when transport stops is turned on, and so as soon as I stop the transport, when I restart it again, the first input note will play the first input pitch. With this disabled, it picks up from where it left off. I usually leave this on. Uh, reset when switching notes and chords, that's uh, what happens when you switch between preserve original chords on or off. If this is enabled, every time we toggle this switch, we reset to the beginning of the note list. And this might be useful in cases where you really want to start over or you don't want an abrupt jump in the middle of the sequence. Because again, remember, you may be changing the length of the sequence by changing this option. And then reset on direction change is fairly obvious. Here, this means reset, as, uh, reset to the beginning of the list when we change the directions. Otherwise, it just tries to pick up where it left off, but going in the opposite direction. These options here allow you to reset at uh, timed increments, and this only works when the transport is running, but it allows you to reset every number, certain number of bars or certain number of uh, specific note values uh, based on the global beat position and also on the current meter. So one way that this might become more predictable is if you, even in a, in a pattern like this where the clip itself is um, not one bar long, you can say that we'll reset every bar. And this is, becomes very easy to hear if you have the uh, metronome turned on, what exactly is happening here. So let's listen to it without it for a second and see if we can figure out what's going on. Well, first, let me turn this back to where it was. And then when we turn it on, you can see how often it's resetting. And if we turn the metronome on, it becomes easier to see what's going on.
This becomes maybe more useful in a case where you want the clip that's playing to be the one that actually determines when the resets occur. And in this case, this clip is 7 16th notes long. So we'll say to reset every 7 sixteenths, And then the rhythm uh, that we have here will also align with the restarts of the, of the note pattern. So let's see how that works. So this time, we never get to the end of the note cycle. We loop back because the note cycle is 15 notes long, but we're forcing this pattern to reset every 7 sixteenths. And of course, you can play with other durations as well. So we're not just limited to cycling through the entire pattern or cycling through a pattern that resets at the length of the clip. We could also say we want to, to reset this collection of 15 pitches every 8 16th notes, despite the fact that our rhythm is 7 16th notes long. And now we can hear that we're offset by one each time through the pattern. Okay, and then finally there's an option for MIDI through. So if MIDI through is enabled, we also hear the incoming pitches. Uh, and this is much easier to hear in a case where we, we have a clip that's different. So I've cleared this pattern now. We'll remember what this clip sounds like. And now we'll collect the pitches from the original clip. And now if we turn MIDI through on, we'll also hear the pitches from this clip. So now the note events in this clip are playing themselves, or their own pitches, and also the pitches that have been collected. So that can be an interesting way of, of adding additional levels of polyphony. This can also sound very weird if the clip that you're using uh, has a very different collection of pitches than the, the pitches that are stored. Uh, that's about all there is to say about this. I mean, it can be very interesting to, to play around with changing the input clip while the thing plays. That can be a nice way of generating interesting and sort of shifting polymetric textures. Because again, we're cycling through the same collection of pitches, regardless of how long it takes us to get there.